recording. Go for it, PB. Father God, we just thank you and we honor and praise you, Father, for all of your goodness and grace your mercy. Father, we thank you for uh, uh, blessing us again to uh, set before you and your spirit, Lord God, as we continue to grow and mature uh, as kingdom citizens. We thank you for the benefits, Lord God, that, uh, uh, that we have uh, as kingdom citizens. Father, we thank you for healing. Thank you for he again, thank you for healing Pastor Corey and and, and, and continuing, Lord God, to cover him uh, with your healing wings. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, those who are getting the, the COVID shots, Lord, uh, the uh, vaccine, Father, and, and how you are uh, continuing, Lord God, to help us to get to some uh, some type of sinless order, Father. We thank you for that. Now, Lord God, we uh, thank you for the teacher on tonight. Uh, we ask, Lord God, that you uh, bless her uh, through your spirit, Father. Uh, that the words uh, that come out of her mouth, Lord God, will come straight from you. Uh, we pray, Lord God, that you would speak, uh, uh, that you would speak through her, Lord God, and think through her, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, most of all, uh, we pray that uh, we will honor your word, Lord God, because your scripture says that uh, you exalt your word above your name. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, speaking of grid or speaker view, I guess when you go back and look at the recording, you can't have a grid view. It just only shows whoever's talking at the time. Has anybody gone back and looked at the videos and noticed that? I've tried to change it, but I think that's the only way it works. So anyway. you're looking at it on your, uh, on your phone or on your computer? The recording when it comes back. Yeah. So it, it doesn't it, matter where you're looking at it? No. Okay. It's just speaker view everywhere. So, and I've tried to figure it out, but I guess that's the important part is whoever's speaking. But it seems like it would be nice if we could see everybody on the recording. Maybe I'll have to look that up. But anyway, good evening. I didn't recognize the Averys or the Mosleys. Uh, Lena is here. Good evening, I've seen, everyone. I've seen all of them. I've seen all of them down there. And like Pastor Bruce prayed, uh, Pastor Corey is his old self, it seems like, tonight. So we just praise God for that. We just bless the Lord. Um, you got anything you want to say, Pastor Corey? All I, all I got to say is that devil better run. <laughs> Amen. Not today, Satan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amen. All right. We had such a good time last week. We didn't get to finish. We are going to finish tonight. We might actually finish a little bit early. I don't know. It just depends upon how much is on people's hearts. But bring us up to speed on what we talked about last week and what you got out of it. I'll jump shirts. You ready? Mr. Curtis has such a pleasant smile on his face. He must have had a really good day today. <laughs> no, I just woke up. I just woke up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's why it's a pleasant look. <laughs> Pastor Bruce. Uh, we talked about, and I think this is probably going to help us all out and probably just stir the conversation up. We talked about uh, what we really, really focused on was talking about approving those things that are excellent, uh, approving those things that are, uh, as believers, we should uh, be in a position through the Holy Spirit to approve those things as we mature to, to, to have the, uh, uh, to be able to have the discernment to choose what's right, to make uh, decisions to prove, to choose what's right, wrong, uh, good or bad, you know, healthy or dangerous, uh, you know, what's important, what's not important. Uh, so Paul said that, uh, that, that, that we should approve those things that are excellent. So what, what's, 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 uh, what's good, what's best, and what's better. I'll stop there. Amen. Thank you. Who else? Mosley's. And it looked like Pastor Corey was going to light up. And then Elder Sarah. Huh? 
Mosley's. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I was just going to say, um, we talked about the process of approval, how to go about how we would have to study the word and pray on the word. We talked about studying to show ourselves approved and uh, how could we know what to approve if we wasn't feeding ourselves the word pretty much. Amen. Thank you. Uh, who was next? Elder Sarah and then Pastor Corey. I'm sorry. Kevin took mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> what Deacon said. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Pastor Corey. Uh, we also and then I see Pastor dived Karen. into uh, spiritual maturity and what it all entails as far as how Paul prayed for the Philippians and how they progressed in their spiritual maturity um, and how he explains the process of being spiritually mature. And I think we talked about how it starts in the mind first. I think we referenced Romans 12, two. Mm -hmm. um, and how we have to be changed and transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove for ourselves the good and perfect will of God. That's the Amplified Classic. And so spiritual maturity uh, allows us to grow in Christ and not only grow in Christ, but grow in fellowship with one another as well. Amen. And we reference, thank you, Pastor. Um, we referenced uh, Romans 12, 2, so that we could further explore that part where Paul says that we may approve what's good and excellent. And we, we can only approve that once we prove it to ourselves. Amen. Pastor Terry. <clears throat> um, what I remember is, <laughs> and you'll have to help me with this or someone will, I had made a big deal about the 5% and that I was going to include it in my prayer. And I have 1 Corinthians 12 and 31 written down. And I believe that the 5% was... Hold on, I'm going there. Okay. Oh, oh you passed it. Yeah. There it is. So apparently 5% of the population thinks... Um, and analyzes to come to their conclusion, right? 80% would rather die than think. I don't remember that from last week, but anyway, I wanted to be part of the 5% that thinks and analyzes before I make a decision or choose which way to go. Mm -hmm. And that was what was important to me. And I wanted to make that part of my, part of my prayer. Amen, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, speaking us. I, I was going to say, uh, also, we talked about test the spirits, uh, Hebrews 4, 12 through 16, mm -hmm. talking about test every spirit. And then uh, I had brought up also that Daniel had an excellent spirit yes. that when they wanted him to eat some other stuff, he decided to go with the vegetables and the good things yes. instead of what they said. So, Amen. Excellent. Yes, we were talking about how to prove what is excellent and the word excellent. And I thought it was really interesting the definition was to carry into two different places or to compare and that's where we got that good better best thing from amen and I think that kind of carries back to the message I, I I preached on Sunday too about not taking everything that we see or hear at face value that we have to go back and and, and, and put it back to God's word right and hold it up against that uh, does the Bible speak against it? Will it glorify God? Will it harm me physically or spiritually? Could it cause another to stumble? And would I make that choice if Jesus were standing right there? And a lot of you, uh, the, that last one resonated with a lot of you as well. Um, anything else? Yeah, um, th th that's why it's so important for us to, uh, Pastor Corey was talking about us growing uh, and, and, and growing by uh, read, read the word, reading the word of God. And then uh, how, how, how we have to take the word of God and sift through the things that, you know, the choices that we make, uh, what people say, what we hear on TV, what we hear on television. You know, as we go throughout our walk with, with Christ, 
we have to sift. We, we have to use the word of God to sift through what the world is bringing to us. And that's why it's so important for us to spend time studying and meditating on the word so that we don't always have to run to our Bibles to, 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 to find out something, but that the Holy Spirit brings it back up to our remembrance as we go through differing, making different choices and doing different things uh, throughout the day. So it's, 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 it's what the Bible says and what the word of God says that we sift through the things of the world. Amen. Thank you. That's a good point, Pastor Bruce. I was telling Pastor Bruce, one of the, I really had fun working on that sermon last week um, because that's exactly what I did. And it proved out the Holy Spirit. Whenever I would look at a principle of the law of attraction, I would look at it and think about it and sit there. And I really didn't go through and Google a bunch of stuff. I said, okay, Lord, what do you say about this? And a scripture would come to my mind. And I, and I was so excited. I love that. You know, and it proved to me that I had enough on the inside of me that God could answer me on that. Now, he didn't give me the whole address and all of that, but I knew the scripture and I would go to the scripture and look at it and say, yep, this fits. And uh, that's how we should be able to live our lives, too. Amen. Anything else? Anybody else? Son. Yeah, I was just going to say that's how we are. Uh, we're supposed to live our lives by the spirit and not by the flesh. And the, you know, something I thought of is that our level of maturity is only going to be uh, synced with the level of word and understanding of the word we have. So if we don't have an understanding of what we're reading in the, out of the word of God, then our level of maturity is, is going to reflect that. And so it's important that we not only study to show ourselves approved, but we got to, I believe it's in Isaiah where he said, put me in remembrance of my word. Mm -hmm. So if we don't put him in remembrance of his word, it's not going to work in our life. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to move on. We worked through approve that you may approve things and that are excellent. We work through excellent. Now he says, not only should we be able to discern what's good, what's better, what's best, what's the priority. <clears throat> then he prays that we would be sincere. And what do you think of that? What does that mean? And why is that important? Again, as son has been so eloquently doing, taking us back to the principle of spiritual maturity. Sincere. Lena. Um, I believe it means like, because he knows what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that it's sincere because if it isn't sincere, then God will know. That's what I, that's how I understand it. Great. Thank you, Pastor Terry. Um, the version that I'm using uses the word pure. In that uh -huh. instance, and I believe that's what it means, pure, or mm. in my mind, the first thing I thought of was without motive. Mm. We're doing things. We should um, have a, a pure, good reason for doing it. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Bruce. Yeah, I, I agree with everybody else, uh, 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 Lena and, and, and Pastor Terry. Uh, if sincere, the word sincere means... Uh, to, to, it means pure or it means unmixed. So with me, with, to me, it, it, it sounds like uh, Paul said, don't mix the world in with the, 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 the word of God or don't mix in the world with your walk with the Lord, you know, or don't try to mix the world in with the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, and then I'm reminded of the scripture that, that says, uh, I reminded the scripture that says, uh, I believe it's in Galatians that said, uh, that 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 the, that the spirit uh, that the spirit works against the flesh and the flesh works against the spirit and if we try to blend those two together we won't be able to do what we want to do so it's important for us to, uh, to to commit ourselves to the word of God and commit ourselves to uh, to obey the word and obey the sincere milk of the word uh, so that nothing can come in and taint our walk with God. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that um, 
oh, that word pure is, is, uh, is, is, is also meaning to be untainted. So when something is tainted, it doesn't mix well. And so when it doesn't mix well, then you, have, you, you got a, a, a big mess like oil and water don't mix well, mix at all actually. But when it's pure, that means nothing's been, it's untainted, it's undefiled, and it has a quality about it that seems like it's uh, genuine. That's a good word. Thank you. Mosley. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with 1 Peter 1, 22. Mm -hmm. the, easy, the easy version, it says, having purified your soul by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Mm -hmm. That's very good too. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, let me throw this little concept on you. This is the translation that Paul used when he used the word. It says, to be judged by sunlight that is tested as genuine. And who just said that? Pastor Corey said genuine. So does that put a little spin on it? Does that change your perspective or your answer? Say so. Speak. Giga me. Pastor Terry. Um, it really doesn't change my answer, but this, <laughs> this may... This may sound funny, but when it says judge by sunlight, there's a lot of times when I will have a, well, I won't say that. There's not a lot of times where I will have, but you know, sometimes you might have on a white shirt and it may have a faint stain in it. And you can go outside and do a sunlight test with whatever it is that has that stain to see if you can see it through the sunlight. That's a test to see um, how well you can see something. So that just brings more um, clarity to the fact that we need to be pure. There don't need to be any stains there. And if we look at it through the sunlight, it will reveal it if there is. That is most excellent, Pastor Terry, because <clears throat> the next screen I'm going to go to, that is the exact example that Paul was using, that's what they did back in those days was to hold cloth up to the sunlight to judge the integrity of the cloth. So that's, Pastor Bruce, and then we're gonna look at that. And, and, and also as we grow and mature, in the, as we grow and mature as believers and as sons and daughters of God, then we are going to go through some tough decisions or tough choices that, you know, because Paul said, prove those things are excellent, tough decisions or tough choices that is only going to be judged by the light of God's word. It's going to be God's word that's going to help us, that's going to judge, uh, that's going to judge how we pass those tests, you know, uh, it got, it's the word of God that's going to, uh, again, I'm going to use this word again, it's the word of God that's going to sift through uh, that test that we're going through, uh, and then we're going to be judged, uh, we, and then our transformation will be judged by uh, whether or not, okay, whether or not we're, we're uh, as uh, uh, Deacon Mr. Denise said, whether or not we're going to be obedient to, uh, uh, to the light of God's word in that particular moment. Amen. So we can't be, <clears throat> our sincerity can't be tested unless we go through something, huh? Dang. All right. Well, let's take a look at this. Illicrinius, I think is how it says, sincere or pure, which most of you said, found only in this verse and in 2 Peter 3, 1, is that where you came from, Deaconess? Was that the one you referenced? 2 Peter 3, 1 comes from the word ele, the splendor of the sun, and crino, to judge. <clears throat> that which is sincere is that which may be examined in the clearest and strongest light, without a single flaw or imperfection being revealed. Paul's language here comes from the practice of holding up a cloth or pottery against the splendor of the sun to see if there be any fault. Moffat, 
another uh, commentator translates it as transparent. And when I read that, I thought about <clears throat> Pastor Corey, well, all of us, when we had to live at the WPP, <laughs> even though it was a little room in the back, that was a glass house over there. And I sure thought about you when I read that part. Applied to Christian character, it means that which is not deceitful, ambiguous, hypocritical, that which is not mingled with error, worldliness, and sin, that which does not proceed from selfish and interested motives, and where there is nothing disguised. Um, I'll say this first, and then I'll ask the question. Weymouth, uh, who has a Bible translation and is a commentator, says, so that you may be men of transparent character. Oh, that's the translation. So you may be men of transparent character and may be blameless in preparation for the day of Christ. I, um, when I was reading this, that word ambiguous jumped out to me. Um, anybody define the word ambiguous and why that's not a good Christian character or trait to have? What does ambiguous mean and why is that not cool? Pastor Terry. I think ambiguous means that somebody can't figure out where you're coming from, either good or bad. It's not apparent. And I may be wrong on that, but I think that's what that word means, that nobody can really tell wh what your angle is. Amen. Pastor Corey. Uh, dictionary definition. Open to more than one interpretation. Mm. Having a double meaning. Mm. Unclear or inexact because of a choice between alternatives mm. has not been made. So that sounds to me like somebody who can take or leave the scripture. Or someone that's double-minded. Yep. Anybody else want to speak to that? Okay, I want to show you something cool. We talked about holding it up to the sunlight to be, um, to our, our character and our nature to be held up to the sunlight to be judged. And I, uh, I put this picture up here. Um, and then I had a note here that the deaconess, Denise, always likes to say that she appreciates me and Pastor Bruce's transparency. Um, those of us, especially those of us who are in leadership, um, I don't want to say, I guess it's a pretty good word to say, we almost have to embrace a glass house, if, if you know what I mean. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem for people to see into our lives and into our house and, 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 and into who we are, because it's our responsibility to hold up uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and draw people by who we are, right? So <clears throat> I thought of that and I thought about, um, this is like holding our souls up to the sun. And I, I came up with this cute little thing I wanna show you. Those are my granddaughter's, Tavy's son selfies. She, that first one in the corner was when she was a kid, she was a teenager and she had to spend a week with us while Cindy was out of town. And I think that was her, I showed her this. I think that was her first son selfie and she said it was, but I put it up here to say, just like, like Tavy is attracted to the sun and has to, capture her picture in the sun. That's how we should feel about our sincerity and our purity in our walk with Christ. Amen. Anybody got anything to say about that? That's kind of cool, huh? Sun selfie girl. Pastor Bruce. Yeah, back to, uh, <laughs> back to uh, Pastor Corey and the definition of ambiguous uh, it, it, it reminds me of uh, uh, you know, the book of James where he says that a double-minded man is unstable is all his way, in all his ways. So someone who's ambiguous is, is, is <laughs> you can't hardly trust them because they're always talking out of both sides of their mouth or both sides of their neck. And uh, they say one thing one time, another thing another time. 
and uh, and they're uncertain of what they do. So that's what I was, what James was talking about, was an ambiguous person, a person who is double-minded in all their ways are unstable. Uh, so anyway, I just want to add that. Add Thank that you. And I, was, and I thought about non-committal as well, not, mm -hmm. not committed, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, to a thing or to a principle. Pastor Cindy. Um, I was just going to say, it kind of alludes to um, that scripture that states that, you know, we are to do um, daily inventory. Um, if we're putting it up to the light, it'll it'll definitely um, shine out what needs to be, like the blemishes um, that are not of God and things of that manner. Um, and just kind of shining the light on it. And um, that's another scripture I wanted to reference to as well. As far as when we are reading, um, we... We kind of talked about it last week as far as um, getting in our word and staying in our word. And that's how we um, are able to figure out what's best or what's excellent in our mm -hmm, lives. Mm -hmm. um, but also the same. Sorry about that. Also the same thing about the light. Um, if we're reading and if we're um, finding what's best for our lives, then it's the same thing as kind of putting it up to the light, which is Amen. reading the word. Baby. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Thank you. Yeah, because that's what scripture says. It's that the, the, the word is like a mirror. Pastor Bruce. Yeah, and uh, you, you were talking about it. Uh, you were talking about it in your sermon over the weekend about these different little things that are out there that really looks like God, that really looks like it could be uh, God, uh, or people could be talking, but but I'm I'm over to James 1 8, where it says double minded, and it says, and, and, Paul, uh, and James talks about how um, a double-minded believer is one who says they may trust in God, but they keep their options open mm. in, case, in case God doesn't prove to be dependable. Oh boy, so, that's good. So, 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 so anyway, they say they trust God, but yet still they keep their options open for the type of things that you were talking about uh, in your sermon. And so, and then wavering people who, who are contradictory. So, uh, that's an unstable person, uh, uh, and, and they're very indecisive. So, uh, but they keep their options open. I thought that was pretty interesting. That okay, so if God doesn't come through me through for me, then I'm going to go to the universe. Amen. See what they say. So anyway, amen. I thought that was Thank you, or to my own flesh. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. So that's sincere. That's Paul's prayer over us: is that we would be sincere. <clears throat> and then the last one, without offense. What does that mean, saints? Sincere and without offense. Lena. Um, I feel like it means if you're doing something out of the kindness of your heart or pure uh, and genuine and it doesn't get received as you should, as you think it should, um, knowing that you did it for the right reasons, um, and not taking offense to it. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Terry. Um, my version says blameless. Mm -hmm. so basically, if we're doing the right thing, um, when Jesus comes back, he will be, um, he will be an approval of the way we've conducted ourselves. Otherwise, if we're ambiguous or if we have motives or whatever we're doing, then when he comes back, he's not going to be able to approve of what we've done here that we said was in his name. Get away from me. I never knew you. Ooh wee. Avery's, thank you. Uh, well, uh, without offense, I was thinking about like not offending, you know, like mm -hmm. not even causing someone to fall or, you know, how you somebody like you do something, somebody do something to you and then you wrong, get them back, that type of thing. So it's like, you know, you don't offend no, you know, you don't offend, you know, like no one else and you don't offend God. So then, you know, you don't cause anybody else to stumble or fall. So that's what I was thinking about when I say without offense. Awesome, that's good too. Let's look at this. Without offense, the Greek, says not stumbling, just what you were saying, or wow. causing others to stumble, just what you were saying. It relates to relational integrity. I like that part. Um, again, I think this goes hand in hand with sincere because 
people were alluding to it first, uh, you know, and Lena talked about not being offended um, or causing, or, and us and the uh, Minister Teresa said not causing other people to fall. I think that goes with sincere and living in a glass house. If you are um, uh, in a position of leadership or you're a Christian and people see you doing stuff, um, it can cause people to stumble. I don't know how many of you are watching the Aretha Franklin um, mini series, but boy, her daddy was a preacher. And I told Pastor Bruce last night, he was a scally wag. I mean, this brother was rough. He was a womanizer. They, his church, they drank and it's rough. It's a good, it's a good series. You should really look at it. But he drank and partied and the congregation went and did these revivals from place to place. And after the church, after church was over, they would go to the hotel and just party, you know, and it, and it, and that kind of behavior, if you know someone that's supposed to be upright and sincere, it, it makes it hard. You know, Pastor Terry and I have talked about this before, and I had a, a church that I belonged to when I was in California, and I was a new Christian. And that pastor, even though he was dynamic and powerful, he kind of had that reputation too. And after a while, when I began to see and hear how he was living his life outside the church, on Sunday morning when he was preaching, I wasn't hearing the message. What was I doing? I was getting the vision of the things that he had done or was doing, and it distracted me from the word of God. Um, anybody speak to that? Agree or disagree with me? No, I agree. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Terry Minister. I was gonna say I agree because when when you when you were just saying what you said, it kind of reminded me of our minister's training because we know that we have to lead, you know, by example and how important that is and how your integrity is so important. Because if I look back and, and I can think about a situation that I was in and thinking that, you know, well, if God is like this, I don't even want to be connected no kind of way, no how. So if people are looking at us in our glass house and see that we're not representing the kingdom the way that we should represent the kingdom, they can be ambiguous or however and have different opinions and we can run someone's life that way as well, you know? So that's what yeah. I thought. Thank you. And thank you for mentioning ministers training. I want to send a text out to you guys because we need to finish. And I want to know if y'all are committed to spending some time to finish. Pastor Drews and then Mosley's. Yeah, I like, I like that uh, relational integrity. I like that word. I believe that, uh, you know, uh, when we have, well, when the Holy Spirit helps us to have relational integrity, then what happens is, is that we respect, we respect the relationships that we're in, whether they be a friend, whether they be, you know, our, our, our spouses or our friends, but most importantly, uh, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. So re relational integrity to me means that, uh, you know, I'm going to respect the relationship that I have with my brother or my sister in Christ. And, uh, I'm not going to do anything like, you know, like we just got them talking about. I'm not going to do anything that's going to cause my brother or sister uh, to stumble. One of the things we used to talk, uh, talk a lot, of, talk about a lot, uh, especially at the WPP, is, you know, what would you think if you've seen uh, the, the, the pastors, you know, hanging out on the corners uh, or, or, in the, or in the bar or, or going in the, you know, just going to the liquor store, you know, maybe, may, maybe, uh, maybe the pastors is going in the liquor store uh, to maybe, maybe the pastor hypothetically go in the liquor store to get uh, a soda and a bag of chips, but you think it's something else, right? Now I've done something that may cause, if, if someone sees me as a member of my church or knows me and says, what the pastor doing there? He must be getting whatever. Uh, I think that's a, that's a cause to, that may cause some or weaker believer to stumble. So anyway, amen. I'm reminded of the time that was before, right before we decided that we wasn't going to chase people that went back out in the program. And <clears throat> I wanted to chase this girl and I knew she was in the bar. And I told Pastor Bruce, we're going to go over. To, she's in there. Go in there and get her. And he's like, I'm not. We're not <laughs> going in there. 
I was mad, but he flat refused. No, we're nope. not going in there. Nope. <laughs> Mostly. I was just reminded of when we was in the ministry, we had been there about 10 years and uh, some things came to light about what the pastor was doing. And uh, it did cause me to stumble because once we left that ministry, I had my mind made up. I wasn't trying to join no other ministry. I mean, I just put it down all together. And, but to God be the glory, you know, that came to pass, you know, but for a minute there, I stumbled so bad from what, from his behavior, I was ready to throw in the top. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's, that's sad, but God loved yeah. you so much. He's like, no, you, you don't get to stay out. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else got any thoughts or comments on, oh, Pastor Corey. You know, um, I guess for me, it, it's, what it boils down for me is how do I view myself in Christ? If I view myself as ambiguous with Christ and what his word is, I'm going to be the same way with other people. Uh -huh. And so if, so if my relationship with God through Christ is shaky, then my relationship with others is going to be shaky. Even though God knows all things and sees all things, but if I'm not being transparent with him, I'm not going to be transparent with anybody else. So it's, it's, it comes down, for me, it comes down to it, it, how transparent am I going to be with Christ? And if I'm going to be that transparent with him, knowing that he accepts me for who I am, then I'm not going to be an offense or a stumbling block, like the scripture says, to anybody else, because I'm showing my wounds or whatever so that they can see that anything is possible when you surrender to Christ. Amen. Thank you. It reminded me. One of the ways the Lord has me be, I, I like that term you use, transparent with Christ. One of the ways the Lord has me be transparent with him in prayer is sometimes <clears throat> there are things that I'm confessing that I just can't confess mental telepathy to God. I have to say it out of my mouth, out loud, even if it's just me. Why? Because then it becomes real and I'm accountable for it. But the well, first see, here's time I the thing, though. When it not only are not only are you accountable, but it also exposes the enemy in that situation mm -hmm. because it now says that God now recognizes this thing. Not only does he he already knew it, but he wants us to confess it so that we can recognize this is where the enemy is trying to deceive me. Therefore, I'm going to trust you in this situation and then just attack it with the word of God. Amen. And I believe confess is a verb so it's not mental telepathy it is something that has to be done physically anybody else it's good it's good i'm gonna wrap this this section up with the amplified translation of this whole prayer and this i pray that your love may abound more and more displaying itself in greater depth in real knowledge and practical insight verse 10 so you may learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best and distinguishing moral differences. I like that. And that you may be pure and blameless, which so many of you mentioned this evening as a definition for sincere until the day of Christ. And here is the bottom line point, I think, actually living lives that lead others away from sin. Amen. Amen. Lena. Oh, sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to. Okay. Anybody got anything to say on that? No, I, I like that. Uh, I, I like that last uh, statement uh, that, that, that the Amplified says, actually living lives that lead others away from sin. And as I was looking at the definition of blameless uh, from the uh, Thayer's uh, Greek, uh, it said, uh, a, a, a mode of life that uh, does not lead others to sin or a way of life that will not lead others to stumble or to sin. So that's exactly what uh, the, this Greek, uh, that's exactly what the uh, uh, 
because actually what the Amplified is is, is it's a uh, Greek translation. Yeah, yeah, it's a Greek translation. So so actually we we should be living lives that lead others away from sin. You know, and, and as I, you know, one thing about one of the things that I love about Bible study is that it really drives home the point. It really drives home the point in the way that we should be living for God. And then, and then, and then, so it's like the Holy Spirit says, okay, I'm, I'm giving you this. Now it's up to you to do this, you know? And, and so, you know, while we go through our everyday walk or as we go through our, um, uh, as we go through making these decisions and choices, uh, our choices and decisions need to be made in a way that's going to be morally right and morally true and pure so that when others see our walk in Christ, uh, then they're going to be thirsty or hungry uh, to, to, to live that kind of life. So that's the kind of life, lives we should be living is lives that will not lead others away into sin. Thank you. Pastor Terry. And that's the part I was looking at too, because really there's only two ways that you can live, either leading others away from sin. If you're not leading them away from sin, then you're not doing anything to help them then you're leading them to sin. There's really only two ways. And I think it goes back to the best, better, and best, or, or is it good or is it God? We could do something that's good. We could do something okay, but that's not necessarily going to lead others away from sin. That's why it's important that we try with excellence or that we do our best so that we're actually so that it's actually coming out in our lives. So I agree with that statement too. It's like, um, it has to be intentional. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. All right. There was a part two to the question or question number eight is that why would each of these qualities be essential to spiritual maturity as Pastor Corey kept leading us back to. So these are all these things he prayed for us are all spiritual Christian qualities that he prayed would be uh, increased and amplified in our lives, that your love may abound in knowledge, in, uh, uh, that you would have all discernment, that you would approve things that are excellent, that you would be sincere, that you would be without offense, that you would be filled with the fruits of righteousness, and it's all to the glory and praise of God. Why are these qualities essential to spiritual maturity? And it's not a buffet either. We have to have each and every one of them. Pastor Bruce. These qualities are essential to our spiritual maturity so that we could be fellow co-laborers or fellow worker, workers in the kingdom of God, leading others into the kingdom or leading others to uh, into the kingdom of God. And, and we cannot lead others into the kingdom of God if we are ambiguous or double-minded or suspect or, or if we're not living lives that are, uh, as Pastor Terry said, living lives that are going to uh, uh, draw people to the Lord. You know, these, these are qualities that Paul prayed for them to have so that, uh, because Paul was, you know, he was a missionary. He was out trying to get people in the kingdom. And, and, and I think it spoke of that uh, on uh, earlier up in the scriptures to how Paul appreciated that they were his fellow laborers uh, bringing people uh, to Christ, so so we can we would we will not be able to bring anybody to Christ, and God cannot get the glory if we're not mature in each of these areas. Amen. When you were saying that, now I'll come to you, Pastor Terry. You know that old saying. People said you, you have you had one job. You had one job. The one job that that that, that Jesus gave us was to what? Go and make disciples. We had one job. And we got to remember that. Pastor Terry. And I like what you said about it not being a, a buffet. It's like a complete package. So I believe that we don't have to ex 
excel in all of these qualities. All of us are stronger in some of the qualities than we are in the others. But if you're missing one of those totally, then you can't consider yourself mature or you're not mature mm, that's good. until you have all of those. Um, if we are missing discernment or if we're missing knowledge, these are all key major big things. And if we're missing any one of them, then we can't act with full maturity. Amen. Thank you. That's good. Anybody else want to speak to it? I knew you did, son. Yeah, you know, look who's who's saying it too is Paul. And then would he go on later on in the, in the letter, in uh, chapter three, he's like, I'm, I haven't obtained all this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's good. And he said, I'm pressing towards the mark of the high calling. So. If I got to do it, y'all got to do it too. So That's for good. me, it, it it just reminds me that even though even though he is on a on 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 a level that at that at that time the Philippian church is not at, he's like, look, I haven't obtained it all, but I still got to keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling, which is uh, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I got to mature to the point to where my life is a reflection of the one that laid down his life for me. So uh, all these things have to uh, coexist in order for me to have spiritual maturity and to see uh, a reflection of Christ living on the inside of me. Amen. Thank you. It's like a cookie that didn't have salt in the mix or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nasty. <laughs> Says the cookie connoisseur. <laughs> Pastor Bruce. You know, and I think perhaps Terry kind of alluded to it. We have to be in, we have to be, and Pastor Corey always says this, so we have to be intentional with these qualities. If there's a quality that I know that I'm lacking in, then I have, I, well, I feel like this, I should be intentional to, 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 to have more love or to walk more in love. If I know that I, I'm, I'm not, I don't have, if I know that I, I need to grow in knowledge, then, then I have to be intentional of getting more knowledge of God. Same with discernment and approving things that are actually being sincere without offense. So we have to be intentional with these things. And, and, and you know, again, I'm going to get right back to the, 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 the purpose of Bible study is that, or one of the purposes of Bible study is that, when we find out that we're lacking in one of these areas, then we need to be intentional about trying to about trying to uh, grow in that area. You know, see, because I know. Look, if, if if you guys are like me, uh, I know as we go through Bible study and look at stuff, there's some areas that I know that I that I may fall short in, and I need to be intentional about you know having more love or more knowledge or or not leading people to sin or. Or you know whatever it is that the Lord that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me about, I need to be intentional. That's the only way that I'm going to mature. Otherwise, if I if I know that the Lord is trying to move me into a certain area and grow in, and I choose not to do that, then guess what I become ambiguous and double-minded. You know, so it's important for 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 me that when I see that I need to gain more knowledge or to, 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 to display more love and, and and I know the Holy Ghost is 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 convicting me in these areas during these Bible studies or or not in this Bible study as I'm reading the Word of God then I need to be intentional about growing in that area and that's why Paul insists so much on that and and and, and just like uh, Pastor Corey said Paul said look we haven't made it we we have not uh, you know made it there yet we're still growing. But when the Holy Ghost shows us those areas, we need to be intentional. Thank you. Now, I have another question. <clears throat> Watch this and think about it. We're talking about what Paul is paying, praying over the Philippians. It's also a prayer for us, how we grow and become, uh, and become spiritually mature. And he comes to this bottom line, to the glory and praise of God. We know that it is good. And think about this, okay, with regard to your life. We know it's good for God to get the praise and glory, um, but why? Why is it important that he get the praise and glory? Because he's God and he enjoys it? What, 
What, what is that principle? You know, we say it a lot when people give us compliments and stuff, we say glory to God, but, but what is the real purpose of giving God glory and praise? Oh. Pastor Terry. Because I'm, I'm thinking about that song because it's, it's not about us. It's about God. And sometimes the way that we um, present ourselves and when people give us praise and glory, sometimes that may feel good. Sometimes we may want to take the glory. Sometimes we don't want to, but it's important that we make sure that God does get it because he's the way. We're just trying to um, plant and water but God provides the increase. So it's important that people know where the blessing is coming from. Amen. That's awesome. That's good. Thank you. Lena. Um, I was going to say something Avery's. similar. I was just going to say that, well, first and foremost, he gave his son so that we could have everlasting life. So, and he's, he is in everything. He's everything. And whether people believe it or not, or whether you understand it or like he's a part of everything whether you make whether you follow that this path or that path god is everything and we wouldn't be able to do anything if it wasn't for him amen thank you avery uh well uh i was just thinking that you know um where god has brought me from and i know that if it had not been for his mercy and his grace in his love, I would not be where I am today. So I know that he's in work in our lives and I know that he deserve all the glory and all the honor and all the praise because we need to praise him to let him know that we appreciate and that we're grateful for all the things that he's doing, all the things that he's done and all the things that he continue to do. So for me, I'm gonna always give God the glory and the honor because I know it wasn't by my will it was his will by his power that he instilled inside of me that made it possible for me to make the accomplishments in my life that I've made. So he will be forever great, get all the glory and all the honor in my life and the praise because it Amen. belongs to him. It, it does. It belongs to him. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Elder Sari, Sarah and then her husband and then the Mosleys. <laughs> So I guess I was thinking about, you know, the agape love and the unconditional love. I think when we live out the Bible study that we've been talking about, people feel that kind of love coming from us. And the reason why it's important, the reason why it's important that we give the glory to God is so that they can understand and develop a relationship with God where they can experience the same thing. Because mm -hmm. when you when you treat people and you show people agape love or the love of God with discernment, you know, I, I mean, I know we always go back to the treatment thing, but when people were there, when I was there, for somebody to show grace and mercy despite you know, all of my glaring character defects mm -hmm. and then turn around and tell me that really that's God, that's who God is. That's not mm -hmm. them. It's mm -hmm. who he is through them. It encouraged me to build my own kind of relationship with God in that same way so that I could feel that unconditional love coming from him, knowing Amen. that it wasn't the grace of a person, but it was the grace of God giving that to me. That's good. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, who else had their hand up? Pastor Corey and then yeah. the Mosleys, I think. Um, for me, it, it goes back to um, <clears throat> just the fact that uh, the reason we give him the glory is, is so that not only is, not only does he get the recognition for the change in my life, but that it becomes apparent and evident that God is real in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me that when, when I, when I give him 
that praise and glory, can't nobody say that they changed me because they didn't know me like he did. Uh huh. And so, um, and so for for many of us, you know, when when we make that choice to allow Christ to come in, uh, a lot of us would have been uh, looked down on by society as no good, low down, dirty, whatever. However, God saw different, and that's why when we when people have seen where we came from. That's why he gets recognized uh -huh. and when they see where we came from and those that knew us or still know us, knowing and see what God has done in our lives, they can see that God is is real in not only in their life, but if he can change their life, knowing that what they went through and what I went through, then I know he can change my life. All I got to do is speak up and say something uh -huh. to that individual and say, hey, if he's done this for me, he can do the same thing for you. I'm no different than you. So Amen. I know that for me that God has given me the ability to not only show himself in my life, but also to give me the ability to tell others what he can do in their lives. Amen. That's great. That's good. Thank you. Uh, Mosley. Oh. Hey, mom. Um, well, thanks, Pastor Corey. I'm, you, you said what I said, but with so many other words. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was uh, reminded myself of Matthew 5 and 16. It said, let your light so shine before mm -hmm. men that they may see your good works and then glorify your Father, which That's is very in heaven. Good. So as he was saying, when someone says something else about you, well, of course, we're going to give God the glory. And that's going to open that door to witness and let them know, well, if he's done it for me, he can do it for you. So. Amen. Awesome. I'm going to share with you what came to my mind here as well. Ezekiel chapter 36. Yeah, we can just, well, let me go up to verse 16. Um. I'm sure there's a better translation, but I'm going to stick with the New King James. He says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds. To me, their way was like the uncleanness of a woman in her customary impurity. Therefore, I poured out my fury on them for the blood they had shed in the land and for the idols with which they defiled it. I so I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to their ways and deeds. When they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said of them, these are the people of God, people of the Lord, and yet they have gone out of his land. And this is God speaking, but I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations wherever they went. Therefore, say to the house of the Lord, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hollowed in you before their eyes. Um, the first time I learned this scripture, what I got was they were ruining his reputation and he had to do something. He says, so tell you what, he, God is so awesome. He didn't strike him down. He said, I'm going to change your heart because it says here, the people were saying, these are God's people acting like this. And so he's saying, so I don't, I, I want people, so back to glorifying God, we have to live our lives. God wants the glory, not for his sake, and that, that so many of you all said, for testimony's sake, but for other people. Just like the Mosley's quote of that scripture, we are salt and light, and the way we live is supposed to draw. And that's what Paul was saying, that we need all this spiritual maturity 
in order to be attractive to the unsaved. Amen? Anybody else got something to say on that? Pastor Corey. Just want to say that I, when, I, I just got a revelation about salt, you know. Oh, there it when, is. When, um, when, you, when you think about salt and something that's real salty, it, it, it draws you to, to be, become thirsty. Mm -hmm. And so when, as we are salt to the world, it should draw them to become thirsty about the things of Christ and about the things of, of God and the kingdom of God. And so if we're not being salt and we're, then we're being trampled on. <laughs> Then we're yep. being trampled on. So, uh, and then that just loses its savor, the Bible says. So we have to stay salty to, to the point to where folks are going to stay thirsty and want to and hear about the good news of the gospel. Amen. That good salty, not that fleshly mean salty. <laughs> we are six minutes over. Anybody got anything else to say about this? One last thing, and then we're going to close out. Oh, did someone have their hand up? I was going to say something? Okay. Encouragement is the kind of expression that helps someone want to be a better Christian, even when life is rough. According to this definition, how do these verses, how would these verses have encouraged the Philippians, and how does it encourage you? Um, the word encouragement, I gave you the definition, the act of giving someone support, confidence, or hope. And I'll go first. Um, for me, again, the word courage is in encouragement. It, it gives me the courage to be bolder in my walk and be more confident in who I am in Christ by him keeping all, if we think about the very beginning of the, the lesson, First of all, building me up and giving me affirmations and then praying strength over me in areas where I may be weak. It just, as the old people say, it gave me enough uh, encouragement to, to say, I believe I'll run on a little while longer. Amen. Anybody else? No? We ready to close out? All right, Pastor uh -huh. Bruce. Oh, son, and then Pastor. Bruce. Yeah, I was just going to say that you know when you look at encouragement, it 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 gives people it gives people hope. It gives them the uh, sense that uh, what I'm doing is not in vain, or it's not. That's good. I like that. Uh, it, it's not of of non importance, and so even if it's even if our encouragement doesn't come from others, our ultimate encouragement comes from God when we know that we're growing in him, knowing mm -hmm. that we're in the word and we're maturing in the word of God and in those and being intentional, uh, like Pastor Bruce said, being intentional about growing in those areas that we need to grow in. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we will hear God say, uh, this is my beloved son, or daughter and who I'm, I'm who I'm well pleased. So I think that's the encouragement that we need to uh, uh, take from this is that even if even if no one else encourages us, God encourages us through his word. Amen. Very good. Thank you. Pastor Bruce, close us out. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I tell you a reason that uh, we can give God, well, I'll say this first. We give God the glory by the way we live our lives. You know, we 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 can say, I mean, you know, you know, you know, that's a you know, that's a that's a, a real common saying amongst believers and among Christians. You know, giving giving God all the glory, the glory to God. But you give God glory by being as 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 a uh, uh, Deacon Moses said, as being salt uh, and light uh, by our conduct and our actions. And, uh, and I tell you what, you know, uh, uh, you know, when we, you know, when Israel profaned his name and, 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 the, and the other people and the other nations was talking about God and as, and as Pastor Patton mentioned, uh, God didn't strike them down or, 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 or he didn't say, I'm gonna kill all of y'all. All he simply did was he said, look, 
I'm gonna sprinkle some water on you right now. I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash away your sins. I'm gonna give you a new heart. And then I'm gonna give you my spirit. And then you'll obey what I ask you to do, you know? And so just for that alone, God gets the glory because he did the same thing in our lives, you know? We were profaning him, uh, you know, our lives were not lining up with God. And, uh, and what did he do? He came along uh, through uh, us having faith in his son, Jesus Christ. He came along, he cleansed us with the washing of the water of the word. Uh, he gave us a new heart. Uh, and then he put his spirit in us. And now, you know, we, we are all walking in his, in his word and in his uh, statutes. And so uh, thank God for uh, cleansing us and cleaning us and sprinkling us and cleansing our consciences of dead works so that we can walk and live for the living God and bring him glory. So, uh, so God has done that for each and every one of us. And so uh, I don't know about you, but uh, God gets the glory in my life for, for just simply, uh, not simply, it's not really something simple. It's something that took a lot by God to get me out of the mess I was in, you know, but now God, uh, we so, so I give him the glory. And, and one of the things that I, uh, one of the things that I've learned to say, uh, you know, I, I never get my, give myself the glory, you know, and what I say is if it had not been for God on my side, if it had not been for God changing my life, no, this is all God. No, God did this. No, I mean, see, I, I try not to ever fix my mouth to try to self for self exaltation, but but I, but I try to always remember, no, to God be the glory. If it wouldn't have not been for the Lord, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So uh, I, I, I just want to remind everybody, or I'm thinking about what Sarah said about the WPP. <clears throat> that was one of the things we said to people all the time because people came to the WPP, if you remember, and they were in awe that they got that whole nice room to themselves. And some of them would just be in tears and saying, thank you. And saying, well, why, you know, didn't feel like they deserved all that. And we would always tell them, this is from God for you. Well, how can I thank you? Live for God. That's where you, that's how you think. Do well, mm -hmm. succeed, trust him. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like Amen. that. Amen. Father in heaven, we just thank you, uh, Father, for uh, your, your grace and your mercy in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that as we live our lives for you, that you are glorified. As we, uh, as we line our character up with, uh, as we line our character up with all the characteristics that Paul, all the fruits that Paul told us talked about or we've been discussing father uh we know that we know that you will be glorified in our lives father we just pray that uh as your holy spirit works in our lives whatever area that we need to grow and mature in uh, help us to recognize that yeah 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 help us to discern that and then help us to be on purpose and intentional uh, about growing in that area so that we could be well-developed, well-rounded Christians, Lord God, that, that bring you glory. Uh, now, Father, we thank you uh, for, uh, uh, for washing us down, for, for washing away our sins. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for, uh, we thank you, Lord God, for putting in us a new heart, creating us a new heart, and also, Lord God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the teacher on tonight who you have used in a mighty way. And, uh, and Father, we pray that you would continue to give her uh, revelation, uh, knowledge, so that uh, you would use her uh, to, uh, to bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I appreciate y'all. The feedback was awesome Amen. tonight. I love you so. We are going to start on chapter number three next week. And something came in my spirit while we were doing this Bible study tonight. Uh, be prepared, ye one and all. I may reach out to you to present the answer to a question. 
or a part of the scripture. There goes deaconess. <laughs> She's about to fall on the floor. <laughs> yeah, be prepared. <laughs> she got it anyway. Don't everybody end the call at once. <laughs> We love you guys. Bye. We love you. Bye. 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 Lesson number three. Okay. Have a good night.